All right, joining us now is Farhad Manju from the New York Times. How's it going, Farhad? Hey, good. How are you? Excellent. It's great to have you here. We also brought a friend of yours, uh, Alexis, here at the table with us. <laughs> great. Uh, Alexis, say I'm hi. I'm a huge fan of Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote an article today on the impact uh, that Amazon Echo, Amazon's Echo has had in your life uh, since it was released you know, a little more than a year ago. Let's just say that you are obviously a big fan. I do not have one myself, but I'm more and more intrigued, especially after reading your words kind of you know, in that in that discussion, you put it on the same level as the iPhone, more or less, as a device that kind of opened up your world to a new level of uh, kind of technological influence, let's say. Uh, how did that happen for you? Well, I think what's similar to it, um, what's similar to the iPhone is that this is a brand new platform with a new interface. So what was new about the iPhone was that it had this touchscreen interface in a way that you'd never sort of knew before. And then suddenly you have this mobile computer and you could do a bunch of things like it was a general purpose computer that you could use uh, everywhere you went. Um, this is similar, not in its functionality, but sort of in its promise, right? Like you, it's um, a brand new interface. Uh, we've had voice uh, devices before, but we really haven't had voice devices without screens before. This is completely like all of your interactions are um, are done by voice. You know, she speaks to you and you speak to it. It's not like how Siri works, which is it shows you some and it shows you a response on the screen. You kind of have to be looking at it to, to use it. That's not true of Alexa. And it's also a platform. Like they're adding a bunch, there are a bunch of developers that are creating apps for it. And they're also create allowing Alexa, these this persona, to be used as a service in other hardware. So, you know, at some point you'll be able to use Alexa in your car or and other devices around your house. So it's really, um, it, you know, they're, they're going for this sort of expansive play where you can imagine that at some point you'll be able to do a bunch of things with it. Um, probably not in outside. It's probably not like a mobile device just because you have to talk to it, but in kind of stationary settings in your house and maybe at work um, and probably in your car, you will have this sort of computer that you only interact with by voice and then it'll be, a bunch, do, be able to do a bunch of things for you. One thing I can tell you right now about a computer that's activated by your voice is that if you have it just hanging out, it randomly yeah. turns on when it hears certain things. When it, when it hears its name, right? Yeah, so yeah. probably not great for the workplace where you're talking about it a lot. But I mean, at yeah. a certain point, you you could imagine this kind of technology getting built and and you know processed to a point to where it was smarter than that, or at least you would hope so, because the potential is really there for this well, to kind of the, improve everything, right? One of the, I mean, Alexa is not a word that you say frequently other yeah. than when you're going to address it. So other than when you're like doing a segment on an Amazon product, right, <laughs> you're, uh, you're not going to say it a lot. So they, they yeah. chose that wisely. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like I randomly trigger it often, but... Um, but you know, I, I I do I did I have wondered what it would be like if like your your name was actually Alexa. I think you can change the trigger word actually, but yeah, only that to, Amazon. to Amazon. Yeah, yeah Amazon only to is Amazon. It. Right. What, what about you, Steve? Are you a fan? Do you have an Alexa at home? I used to. Well, it's not going off when you just said it. That's I, I crazy. turned it off. Oh, you turned it off. Okay. Yeah, we we uh, we decided we were gonna like live by the fact that we always set off other like listeners yeah. and and people that watch the show their devices. <laughs> so we're like, well, we're gonna you know it's it's our own poison. And after the first time it happened, we're like, okay, we can't do this. So it's off. Great. So um, anyway, I had one. I you know I tested one that Amazon sent me to try out and review or whatever. Um, and, and I loved it. Like I had it for about a month, and then when I got rid of it to send it back to Amazon. I, I got myself in this habit of walking in the door and telling it what music I want to listen to. And then I like almost missed it. It was like a girlfriend left me or something. And like, <laughs> I was so used to having this companion with me and like helping me out and it was gone. Um, and I ended up instead of buying one for myself, the only thing that kept me from buying it, um, this was last fall. Um, it didn't have Spotify integration at the time and I'm a right. major Spotify user. And that was literally the only thing, uh, holding me back from, uh, buying that or I ended up buying a Sonos um and then sure enough what about a month ago or so they announced that they have Spotify integration so now I have big time regret um I gotta it, say it, that it's just superior the Spotify integration has just made it like a much much better device it is sort of like it's it it has become like the killer app for it because mm -hmm. before it had prime music which just didn't have a lot of stuff um and Spotify has just made it sort of a much more useful device. And um, Steve mentioned Sonos, so I have um, 
several Sonos and have like a multi room Sonos thing and I just never use it anymore. Like mm. it used to feel really, really easy to find a song on the Sonos app. Like you could do it in a matter of minutes. Um, and that felt like great. Like you had access to all of the world's music, but, and it was just like a few minutes away, <laughs> but now it, that feels like just ancient. Like it just feels really like a trudge to kind of go through the app and get a song when you can with, uh, Echo just like ask for it and it'll, it'll start playing like literally in under 10 seconds you'll have a song so that just seems so much better. Mm -hmm. So Farhad you talked about how it's promise is it's a platform and it keeps getting improved and, that, and that's amazing some people see that as a negative they call it you know it's 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 a Trojan horse in your house like it's this thing that Amazon can add things to at any time uh, what do you make of that? Well I will say it is I expected that to be the case. I expected it to be like basically like a front end for Amazon store. And I, I don't think it's really that. Like it's it's surprising actually. They've the the store is not integrated that much into Alexa. Like especially at, at first. They've added some more stuff. So now if you've ordered something from Amazon in the past, you can say reorder and then it'll send it to you, which is actually a really handy feature if you shop from Amazon often. But that is not I don't find that my interactions with Amazon as a retailer like are a huge part of the um, of Echo, and I think that's obviously what people are worried about. I mean, another big worry is that it's an invasion of privacy. Although I really fail to see how it's a bigger invasion of privacy than your smartphone, which is like also a device that has an always on microphone and cameras. And it's one that you take with you everywhere and you're surrounded by other people's smartphones. And you're not like, like no one's bringing their own Alexa, uh, their own echo to record you. Like this is in your own house and your smartphone's already recording you. So I don't think it's like a bigger privacy invasion. Um, and, and as far as like it being a platform, Amazon has been pretty open with this platform. Uh, you know, pretty much anyone can create an app for it. And there are actually a whole bunch of like in like in the early days of the app store or the iOS app store, there's a lot of dumb apps for it. Um, and then there's a handful of useful ones. Um, I heard of a there's a bank that's going to come out with an app soon that, you know, if you have a account at that bank. You can just ask it for like your balance for your checking account or your credit card or ask when your bills due. Like those kinds of things are really useful. They're the kinds of things you do on your phone already, but you can imagine doing them much more quickly with a, with a device like this. Yeah, you might And it seems it. like developers are being smarter with it too. Like you look at the Apple Watch and people, the apps on there, they're just trying to shrink down little smartphone mm -hmm. apps onto like an even smaller screen. And there's no real use case for that kind of form factor. Whereas with um, the Amazon, um, the Echo, it totally makes sense. You walk into your house, you use your voice, you set a timer, you say, hey, call me an Uber. You say, hey, order me a pizza. <laughs> That's just awesome. It's very Star Trek-ish. Um, and it seems like whatever Amazon is doing on the developer relations side is working way better than what you know Apple has done with that, uh, communicating that kind of platform to, uh, than Apple has done with the watch. Well, the order of pizza is when you need, that's when you get to realize like where the advertising comes in because you can only order a Domino's pizza for now. Yes, for now. Right, nothing stopping <laughs> right. Pizza Hut from doing it or Papa John's from integrating. Yeah. I mean, anyone can integrate into it. Right. I mean, I think there are some apps that have been given sort of like uh, more uh, like a higher profile in in the Alexa app and sort of been added as like a first class member of the service. Um, so like Uber, for example, like they've really promoted the fact that you can order an Uber through it. It's something they added recently. And I think, I think it's the result of a, of, you know, some sort of negotiation with Uber, but I'm sure that Lyft could create its own app. It just might not be as prominent. Like, and, and that's sort of, um, where some of these deals and marketing might come in. But I think part of it is that, I mean, from what I could tell talking to them, they're really uh, stretched thin with this device. Like they have a lot of demand for new services and you can tell that, you know, it's only a, a, about a year old and you can tell that they're um, trying to add a lot of stuff very quickly, but it, they've been surprised by the popularity and they've been surprised by sort of how much users want from it. And so they're sort of uh, trying to do a, a lot in a little time with this device. Well, so you brought up the popularity. Do you think that they're artificially controlling it? Because I know with the, the especially the new devices, there's the uh, the Echo Dot and the uh, Amazon Tap. 
So the Echo right. Dot is the small one that connects to your better speakers, and then the Tap is the portable one. Uh, and you brought up the fact that you don't walk around listening to people. And so the portable one, smartly, you have to press the button uh, in order to speak to it. So it's not constantly listening to you and everyone around you. Um, but they're really hard to order. I mean, the dot, you, could, you, can't, you can't order unless you have an Amazon Echo already. Uh, and then there was a workaround, but then that, you know, Amazon took that away. Are they artificially trying to control uh, these, how many devices are in the wild? Um. I think they're just releasing it slowly. I mean, from what I know, like the Echo itself, I think they're they seem to be having a hard time making enough. Like they're it's it's sold out often on on Amazon. It's selling for a premium on eBay. Um, Amazon is not. I mean, they've they've made Kindle for a while, but they're not. I don't think they're used to scaling up hardware this quickly. Um, I mean, it's just a very young device. Um, and in terms of the, yeah, the Echo Dot release is a little odd, but um, they've always sort of been a little bit experimental with how they release devices. I mean, the first Echo, I mean, it, it was hard to get in the in the early days. You had to sign up to this waiting list, and you had to be part of Prime and sign up to this list. I I didn't get a review device. I ordered one, and it took like at least five months to ship. So uh, they have sort of. I don't. I don't know if it's deliberately because they don't know if their service can handle scale or what. But they've you know tried to limit this release, and it might just be they can't make enough or they can't service all those many people. It's also just that it's new and they're experimenting with it, and it might be that they just want it to remain this sort of like beta type per, uh, you know app for a while. Although they have run Super Bowl ads for it, they are trying to sell a lot, so they're not. It's not that small. Yeah. Uh, my my wonder like the thing that i wonder about is how tied to the success of the echo is amazon just as as a you know as a company that's obviously behind it and created it and all that kind of stuff but uh we know that other people are kind of working on this kind of technology do you think it's easily rec replica replicatable replicatable well, there we go whatever not, that word is so so one of the things i think is really interesting about the echo is that it is a device made by a company that I really think that it like sort of the impetus of this device is that they don't have a smartphone. They don't have a popular smartphone and so they needed to create some other thing. I mean, they obviously tried to create a smartphone and it failed. Um, this is a device that like tries to leapfrog the smartphone or at least tries to find some other new platform. And I, I really think, I mean, I don't think it's conscious, but I think that there, this explains why Google and Am Apple didn't think of this device. Like they have all the talent in making this device and they have a platform to create it on, right? Like Siri, you could imagine Siri doing this and they could just add it to the Apple TV and you could imagine Google doing it with Nest or with their uh, new router or with any number of other devices. They have sort of the voice recognition and other technologies to do it. But I think it's the the fact that Amazon did it was because like they didn't have this key, uh, they didn't have this lock into your life, right? Like they didn't have a smartphone and they needed something else. I'm sure that Apple and Google, like especially if this succeeds, if Echo succeeds, I'm sure they'll they'll try to to replicate it. And it doesn't seem that hard to replicate. Um, but you know, Amazon is like more than a year ahead here, yeah. so there is that. 